Welcome back to the Tactical Family Channel. Today we have a Ruger PC9 carving back out in front of us today, and I believe we're on our last thing we're going to do to this weapon. And uh, what that is, this is popping off a little bit, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to swap out the trigger. That's right, we are going to change the stock trigger that this weapon came with, which is just a plastic one there. The trigger we are swapping it out for is a Tandem Cross Victory Trigger for the Ruger PC-9 Carbine. Now this trigger is a drop-in trigger, which is a good thing. This trigger is made of aerospace grade aluminum, aluminum um, over the, like I just said a second ago, the stock plastic trigger that it comes with. On the back, as you guys can see, um, it has a flat-faced texture design, improved grip, control, post travel adjustment and offer short identi identical repeatable trigger pulls and obviously I got this one in red they do have it in a uh, chrome color and a black blemished color but since I was already doing some red things to this I went ahead and went with the red trigger to do this you're going to need punch pin and you need a 532 allen wrench alrighty so the first thing we're going to do as I'll show you guys, that obviously the weapon is clear. There's no mag there. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock the bolt back. Once we have that, uh, once we have the bolt locked back, as you can see, we're now going to go ahead and separate the barrel from the stock. Push up, turn, and pull. And now we just have our stock here in front of us. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and release the bolt. And now we're going to use our Allen wrench to remove the uh, takedown screws here. And you don't have to remove them all the way out. I'm not even sure if they should come all the way out, but you don't have to. And now we're going to go ahead and separate the receiver from the stock. And now we'll be uh, setting the stock aside for now. And now as you guys can see, now we just have the receiver right in front of us. Alright, so now we're going to use a punch to remove these two pins right here so we can remove the uh, trigger housing out of the receiver. And it's really simple. You push and the pins come right out and then as you guys can see, there goes the uh, trigger housing, uh, came right out of the receiver, so now we're going to go ahead and set the receiver aside. We're going to take our pins and set our pins aside. And now we have our uh, trigger housing right here in front of us. Alright, we want to make sure that the safety is off because we want to go ahead and uh, release the hammer and have the hammer go forward. And as you guys can see, the safety was off. I'm just going to place my hand in front and I'm going to pull the trigger and there we go. Alrighty, now with the hammer all the way forward we can go ahead and use the uh, push pin that we have here and we can go ahead and push out this pin right here. It comes out again very easily as you guys see. Take this and we just set this aside and then we can take out the the hammer and the spring. There's the spring and the hammer. And we'll go ahead and set these two parts aside. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove our last pin. Let me get a little bit of a small of a, a punch, and we're going to push this out. You guys can see. Oops, that just came right out. So we're going to set this uh, pin aside. And then we're going to take the trig we're going to take the trigger out. As you guys can see, there is the trigger. And also, as you guys kind of saw that popped out, is we have the uh, detent and the spring that popped out. And the spring and the detent right here, this is called the trigger return um, spring. Um, sometimes it can stay in, sometimes it will pop out, just kind of did with me. So you want to take it out no matter what because you don't want to lose them. So we're just going to set this aside too as well. And we're going to set aside the uh, trigger housing now. 
and now we have our trigger in front of us. Alrighty, so we actually have one more pin here to uh, remove. Um, that's this one right here. And this one right here holds together the uh, sear spring and disconnector inside the trigger shoe. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. Now, when you remove it, um, hopefully everything stays together, which I'm just kind of holding my hand over it. Let me put the, uh, the pin aside, just like with the other ones. Um, and then we're going to remove the sear spring and disconnector from the trigger shoe, as you guys can see. And basically, that's how it's supposed to um, be. Now, in case it does come apart, let me just take it apart here. I'll show you guys. It's very simple on how to put it back together. Alrighty, so if uh, when you remove the sear and disconnector from the uh, trigger shoe, which is right here, um, if this does come apart, it's very, very simple to go ahead and put it back together. So you're going to grab your uh, sear here. You're going to put the spring in, the, in this. Let's see, can I show you guys? Can you see? Into the uh, counter bore on top. And then from there, you're going to grab your disconnector. And same thing, you're going to put the spring in the um, center bore of the disconnector. Sorry if you guys can't really see with this. And then basically, sorry. And then basically, you're just pushing down until, until the disconnector locks onto the sear. And then you just go ahead and set this aside. Alrighty, so we have our new trigger shoe here, and we are now going to place this right into the new uh, trigger shoe. And we're going to grab our small little pin that we just punched out, and we're going to place it right in. I don't know, kind of, actually, is that? See, I got to look, sorry guys. Got to get, get to match up there. Okay, and there we go, we got it in. Alrighty, so they do include a um, sleigh pin, which is gonna go in the front hole here of the trigger to hold this in place while we get it back in the trigger housing. Very simple, went in nice and easy. Now actually, before we do that, I forgot, it comes with a nylon tip screw, which we need to put into the back of the trigger, uh, metal in first. Which we're going to do right here. And this is for the, um, the post travel adjustment. So we're going to go ahead and you want to screw this all the way down for right now. Um, it does come with a small Allen wrench. So you guys can do that. Yeah, that's good enough. It's about all the way. All right, so now we're going to get our uh, trigger housing here back. Move this little Allen wrench. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put back our uh, trigger return spring and detent, which goes, see, is there any possible way you guys can see? Maybe. There you go. You see, I'm kind of blurry, but there. You guys see that hole? So the spring and the detent right back in there. You guys can see. And now we're going to go ahead and put the um, the trigger assembly back into the uh, housing. As you guys can see it just I'm kind of doing this upside down, but you just slide it in. And then once you do that, I'm going to kind of flip this around here so you guys can see. Is what we need to do from this point is we need to pull back on the the trigger, sorry I was out of view, there we go, this wasn't pushed down all the way, so this needs to make sure that your uh, trigger assembly is pushed down all the way into your trigger housing here, sorry, and what we need to do is we need to get it pushed back all the way so that we can align the sleigh pin in the hole on the trigger housing. Just had it. Trying to get you guys to have a view with it in 
that I've lined it up as you guys can see it's lined up and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab our other pin and basically we're going to push it in knocking out the slay pin there we go we have that now in place and the slay pin has come out hopefully that was a good viewing I apologize did the best I can I have the camera zoomed in I'm trying to uh, do it so you guys can see everything but uh, as you guys can see now we have the trigger trigger assembly back in the trigger housing all right so now we need to go ahead and we need to get our uh, hammer back here and we need to make sure that the slated face is towards the towards the rear as you guys can see just flip that around here so as you guys can see, and then we're going to go ahead and set this in the housing. And we're going to go, as you see, we lined it up there. We're going to go ahead and get the pin, and we're going to push the pin back through. Let's see. Just like that. All right, so with the hammer all the way forward, as you guys can see, we want to replace the uh, mainspring here with the wide end down um, into, see if I can show you guys here, into this hole, let's see, probably better, basically the hole is right back there in the trigger housing. You guys can possibly see, right there is where it's going to sit. So we're going to go ahead and place it in, and when you do that, this part right here, so the narrow end right here is going to go into the slotted part of the hammer. Just like that. And then basically you're going to want to pull back to confirm that it's actually working. And as you guys can see right there, the trigger locks, so that's good. I'm going to release that. As you guys can take a look here too as well, you can see that it is functioning the right way. And you want to do this probably a few times just to confirm uh, that it is working. Um, if you try and push this back and it gets stuck, um, there is a window right here on the trigger housing you can use. You can use like a push pin to uh, move the mainspring to get it to uh, get right into the hole that it needs to uh, be in. Alrighty, so since everything looks like it's working well, we're going to go ahead and cock the hammer back one more time. We're going to go ahead and grab our receiver here. And we're going to go ahead and let me actually come out a bit here. Not forward, let's come out so I can get more in the picture here. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and replace the uh, trigger housing back into the receiver. Doing it upside down, a little backwards there, but anyways. So there we go. And now once we have it back in, we're going to go ahead and replace the uh, pins that we took out. There we go, we got one in. And we have two in. So now we have the uh, trigger housing back into the receiver. And now we're going to go ahead and get the stock and put the receiver back into the stock. Really, really simple process to do here with this, which makes it very, very nice. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten down the uh, receiver screws, which one is behind the trigger guard, the other one is in front of the magwell with our uh, Allen wrench here. Alrighty, so we have our, um, we've put our uh, trigger assembly back into our trigger housing, our trigger housing back into the receiver, and our receiver back into the stock. Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and reattach our barrel here. Just place it right back in. Close. There you go. Send the bolt home, as you guys can see. 
And we'll pull the trigger. And thus far, everything looks like it's functioning perfectly fine. Again, we're going to be taking this out here and obviously testing it. Um, huge difference in the trigger just by dry firing. I can feel it um, a lot, lot better, a lot nicer. Um, and then at any time that you guys want to, with the included little mini Allen wrench, you can go ahead and you can adjust the uh, screw right here. And basically what that would do is it would adjust the post travel for you if you desire to do that. You don't have to, um, but you can. And then that will be it for today, everybody. As you guys can see, we went ahead and we swapped out, which I'm, I think this might be the last thing we're doing to this weapon. I'm not sure what else I, uh, I can do to it. Um, so it might be the last thing, but we went ahead and we swapped out the original plastic stock trigger uh, with the uh, Tandem Cross uh, PC9 Carbon Ruger. All right, sorry about that. My uh, battery in the camera died, so uh, it went out there. Batteries. Get another one, you moron. But what, basically what we were saying is we replaced the uh, stock uh, plastic trigger that came with the Ruger PC9 Carbon with the uh, Tandem Cross Victory Trigger, um, which you guys can see right here, which I got in red. Um, pretty simple thing to do. Um, I welcome anybody who has a Ruger PC9 Carbon who wants to do things or learn how to do things, uh, basically to uh, you know go go after it, uh, swap out the trigger, other things. It's the only way you're really going to learn your weapons, learn parts, and learn how things work. But all together, I think it went very well. I'm very uh, interested in uh, seeing how this works, actually firing and everything like that. Um, again, like I was saying, I don't know if it cut out before, the post-travel um, screw adjustment, you can adjust that at any time, or you can just leave it all the way in and just you know fire as is. But other than that, we're done here for today with our Ruger PC9 carbine. If you guys have anything else you'd like to see done to this weapon or anything else that um, is out there that maybe I have missed that I can do to this weapon, but I think I'm, I think I'm at, I think I'm at its max on things I can do to this weapon. Uh, but feel free to uh, leave stuff in the comments like that so I can uh, pick up on it and then go ahead and maybe do some other things to it. Other than that, again, you guys, thank you for stopping by and checking out this video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and you guys have a good day.